and hello everybody. In today's lab, we're going to be looking at a phenomenon called absorbance. And absorbance can be used to indirectly measure the concentration of a solution that is colored. This idea was developed by two researchers whose last names were Beer and Lambert, thus it's called the Beer-Lambert's Law. And in that, what they found is that if you take a colored solution, like say at your home you have Kool-Aid or Windex uh, window cleaner that has like a bluish or a reddish tint or a color like that, if you change the concentration of the particles that give it the color, it'll change the lightness or the darkness of the solution that's in it. And then when you pass a light through it, some of that light will be absorbed. And when that absorbance occurs, then you have a measure of concentration that you can derive from that. Now the instrument that, that, will, that will be used today is something called a colorimeter. It's a type of spectrophotometer. And when spectrophotometers are used, they scan the entire wavelength of color in the visible spectrum. And they find a wavelength of light that gets absorbed easily by the solution. We, however, have a colorimeter which measures wavelengths at four specific wavelengths. And those typically are red, yellow, green, and blue. So the solution we're gonna be using today is blue, and we'll be using red light to pass through that. And then, because they're pretty close to complementary, some of the light will get absorbed, and as a result, we can measure the absorbance, and from that, using a graph, we can get the concentration. What that graph looks like, you'll find out after measurements are being taken. So now, we're gonna get on our goggles, because remember, you, we're using solutions that will have a very low pH, which means they're very acidic, and we're gonna get in the lab, and then we're gonna measure some colors and their absorbances. What you see in front of you is a typical setup to complete a Beer's Lambert's Law lab. There's a colorimeter right there, that's what I described earlier. And as you can see, it's not that big. Inside of it is a square cuvette, and you can see it's set for 635 nanometers, which is red light. There's our copper sulfate solution. You can see it's blue. And we have some distilled water to dilute the solutions. And that's our lab quest. The lab quest right now is reading zero because right now all we have in it is water. You want to set it up that way so that way there's a baseline. And water is colorless, so it's not reading any absorbance whatsoever. So all the light is passing through it, as you can see there. And that's how we'll be looking at the display once we do subsequent measurements. Now, the test tube rack is set up with five solutions, and in each of those we're going to dilute them gradually in order to create a calibration curve so we can figure out the unknown, which is going to be the goal of our lab, is to figure out what is the unknown concentration based on the absorbance for the experiment. All right, the first solution we're going to mix in, is a mixture of the copper sulfate solution and the water. You can see the amounts written here. We have eight milliliters of water to two milliliters of copper sulfate. In order to make things more accurate and precise, I used a pipette to transfer the liquid from here to here. You can't easily pour it in directly. So what's gonna happen is we'll mix these together and let it sit so that they can mix properly. So what you do first is add the copper sulfate, pour it in, okay as much as you can and then add the water okay and then give it a little shake and there you have it so this is test tube one and I want you to notice how pale the blue is compared to the starting solution now that's because this is a process known as dilution and with dilution it literally means to water down. That's the ancient Greek word uh, root for it. So we're watering down this concentrated solution into one that's a little more dilute. If it's too concentrated, then when we start taking readings, it could overwhelm the sensor and cause it to give inaccurate results. So now, if you look in your lab handout, you're gonna see that we have four more solutions to mix, and you can see the proportions in the data table. So I'm going to start working on that and why don't you calculate out how much the concentration is now after diluting it. 
There are a variety of ways that you can do that. In your living systems, or maybe AP Bio class, if you took that, they like to use percent um, as a way to track dilution. In chemistry, we do it a little bit differently. And I'll share that with you in the explanation uh, in a little bit. So let's start mixing these solutions, and you'll see how, what, the, what's gonna, what it's gonna look like after we mix everything according to what is in the lab handout. All right, we've made the solutions. As you can see, as you increase the amount of copper sulfate in the solution, you'll notice that the solutions get progressively darker. And that has to do with the copper sulfate that's in the solution. Now, I also made an unknown as well, and you'll notice it's somewhere in between any of these really. So now what we'll have to do is measure them and we'll use the colorimeter for that. And then I'll demonstrate one of them and then show you the results uh, when we're all done. So here's how you take a measurement using a colorimeter. So what you have here is a cuvette and you'll notice there's a glazed end and a clear end side. And this is the side that has to have the light pass through it. In here, I already have a cuvette of water to use as a, a, a holding uh, placeholder so that the light doesn't burn out. And you wanna make sure that you wanna hand it, handle it by the glazed end so as not to uh, stain the, uh, the path of the light with oils from your hands. Then what you do is you then take a measurement and let's see if I can make this viewable. And you can see here that it, it takes a reading and you can see the reading off to the right here. According to this, it is 0.135. Then once you do that, you hit keep. And it asks you, what is the concentration of this? Now, in the solution that we had, it was two milliliters of copper sulfate. That's basically a 20% solution or 0.2. We know that the starting concentration of the uh, copper sulfate was 0.4, so it's 0.4 times 0.2, which is 0 0.08. So then you type in, using the touch screen here, 0 0.08 and the concentration is in moles per liters and you hit OK. And now you can see here there's a data point. So when we do that again and again, you'll see more points and you'll see the shape of the curve unfold. Okay, so we've taken all our measurements and you can see there are one, two, three, four, five data points that you can see plus an extra one for zero, which is pure water. And as you can see, there is a definite relationship or trend between concentration here and the absorbance. You'll see that as the concentration increases, the absorbance also increases. It also looks like that if you connected the dots or treated it with a statistical analysis, you'll see that this looks pretty linear. So let's do that right now. Using the software that's inside the LabQuest, you generate a line of best fit. And that line and the equation that results from it can be used to figure out the concentration of the unknown solution. You measure the absorbance and then you compare it to the line and then plug it into the calculation to figure out the concentration, where the x value is the concentration and the y value is your absorbance. Now the correlation factor of 1 means that it is a relatively perfect fit based on the data. Anything other than 1 means that the data set wouldn't work and that you would have to start over. So that's how we're going to go about figuring out the concentration of the unknown solution. And now it's time to measure the concentration of the unknown solution. We're going to put it in the colorimeter and measure the absorbance. Now, once the reading stabilizes, you take the absorbance reading and then whatever the value is for that, that will be substituted into the line of best fit equation. So it looks like our reading is 0 0.320. And now we're going to use that to calculate the concentration of the unknown solution. All right, now it's time to calculate the concentration of each solution. To do that, we will use what's called the dilution equation. That's MC times VC equals MD times VD. The C stands for the more concentrated of the two solutions. The D stands for the diluted solution. In any of these cases, our unknown in this calculation is the concentration of the dilute solution.
or MD. To do that, you just use simple algebra by substituting the values into the equation and then figuring it out by rearranging the equation. I made reference earlier to the percentages, and we can say that because you'll notice we're dividing by a factor of 10, which is kind of similar to using percentages and figuring this out. In this data table, we collect and compile all the absorbance data for each concentration that was measured. You're probably wondering, why do we have to write all this out if the LabQuest did this for us already? Well, keep in mind, you might be asked to write a lab report or compile the information in a lab notebook. Either way, it's a good idea to have a written record of what the concentrations are. Look at the absorbance of the unknown. See if you can anticipate what the concentration might be when compared to the other ones. Now that we have the absorbance of the unknown, we can use this equation here, or the absorbance equation, to calculate the unknown's concentration. Capital A is the absorbance, which is measured using the LabQuest. The lowercase a is called the molar absorptivity. It's a constant that's unique to each solution. In our experiment, we treat it as the quote-unquote slope of the line. B is the cuvette path length. I showed you that little holder of the solutions. It's one centimeter, so that makes it easy to calculate. And then the concentration is what we're solving for. That's going to be in molarity units. So one way to remember this equation is to remember your ABCs, so to speak. I know that's a little chemistry humor there, but it works, and it works really well. So the molar absorptivity is from the line of best fit. That's the slope of the line. All right. I hope you enjoyed watching that demonstration slash experiment. As you can see, there were a lot of things going on with this experiment. A lot of measurements. We had to make the calibration curve using known concentrations, taking their absorbances, and then plotting them on the instrument using a, and then seeing the best fit line. Getting that line gets you the molar absorptivity constant which is unique to each solution and trying to explain more requires a lot more physics than I know about or what you're ready to take in so we'll just leave it at that. Now you have all you need to figure out the concentration of the unknown solution. You saw the absorbance measurement, you know the equation to use, so why don't you calculate it out and see what you get. Then ask your instructor for the actual concentration. You can use that as a way to introduce yourself to a concept called percent error and we'll let the instructor teach you how to manage those calculations and help you use that information to make de better decisions on how you can do the lab differently to reduce those errors. So again, I hope you enjoyed watching today's video and I'll have another one ready to go in the future. Thank you very much. Have a good rest of your day and week.